Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and it's a pleasure to follow my co-chair of the Cycling and Walking APPG, where we so often agree, whereas tonight we probably will not. So whilst we're looking to make Britain the best place to grow up and grow old, I am delighted to represent the beautiful constituency of North Devon, which is certainly one of the most popular places to grow up and grow old, having had a surge of people move there during the pandemic for their primary residence and their second home. We're also an incredibly popular holiday destination, which has led to a surge in Airbnb short-term holiday lets, which, whilst great for our tourism economy, does mean that we have something of a housing crisis ourselves in North Devon. So whilst warmly welcoming the levelling up and regeneration bill, I very much hope, as it makes its passage through this House, that we will see more done to tackle second homes and short-term holiday lets to rebalance our housing economy back in North Devon. And whilst I have the opportunity to put it on the record, I also hope that the long-awaited consultation into short-term holiday lets promised last June as part of the tourism recovery strategy will be forthcoming as a first step on that journey to sort our housing market. I was a former maths teacher, and so I have spent time here before talking about averages and variation. And when it comes to education and the schools bill, I very much hope that we will look deeper than the average that says that Devon is OK. Because when you look at the variance in a county the size of Devon, there are some issues in my North Devon constituency. Say we were to look at the social mobility index. South Hams, 49 out of 324. Exeter, 81. My North Devon constituency, 238. My neighbouring Torridge, Northern Devon as we call it up there, 283. We need to look deeper than just a large local authority to enable those children to have their education levelled up, because to date we have missed out on cold spot funding. And whilst delighted to welcome Multiply, I do not know quite how that will be delivered in my constituency, where we only have one FE college. We are 65 miles from a university. My FE college, Petrock, are utterly brilliant, but please do not tell me that this is going to be coming in online as a course, because what we do not have in North Devon is broadband. And whilst we are talking um, in these bills about the elimination of the barrier of digital exclusion, when I talk about digital exclusion, it is not so much what gadgets the children have, is that we can't even connect to the outside world. The inequalities I talk about when I think about levelling up are around rural and coastal communities. And I, my theme throughout my few minutes speaking tonight is how do we ensure that as we level up the country, we actually reach into those pockets of deprivation in rural and coastal Britain. Health inequalities on the coast are perhaps better documented than educational ones. But I would like to sing the praises of my tiny North Devon District Hospital, the smallest on um, the mainland, and it has done a fantastic job for the people of North Devon through the pandemic. We've also seen it merge with the Royal Exeter Trust, which means that we are actually managing the flow of patients and the flow of medical professionals between that tiny hospital and the bigger one further south. In Devon, we retained our Nightingale Hospital, and I'm terribly proud that we will be the first to deliver our COVID catch-up fund ward. So on May the 23rd of this month, the 1.9 million given to my hospital in December will deliver operations on orthopaedic knees and hip replacement in just two weeks' time. It's a remarkable achievement, and that team is also ready to build our new hospital. We're one of the 40. Their plans are modular, and I would ask, while I have the Minister's attention tonight, is there any chance of bringing us forward? We're at the end, but we can build it now. And without those new theatres and the new housing element of that hospital, we are struggling to bring people to North Devon because of the housing crisis described earlier. And I wouldn't want to say that everything health-wise was rosy. It won't come as a surprise to the Minister for me to mention we're a little short of dentists. And if any of them are listening tonight, the surf's fantastic, the countryside's beautiful, and you will get the warmest of welcomes. I hear the Indians have a lot of dentists looking for work. We will welcome them open arms. And this is a department that has managed to deliver things in buses. Please can we have a mobile dental unit to at least visit our children in the coming weeks and months. And so as we look at how we level up, 
rural and coastal Britain. I hope we can morality check our policies, because many of those that work so well in Westminster have lost a certain je ne sais quoi by the time they reach us in rural and coastal North Devon.